talking, cause you know we got some problems So too long in a way we talk and I'll solve them We may laugh, we may learn, we might be your games with and peace Hi Hi What are you going to PT for? Um, I have a cyst in my foot and it's honestly just like really annoying um and it's been like causing it it honestly hurts really bad so it's just like strengthening because they have to they want to like take it out but it's in like a really weird spot so they can't really get to it so now I'm just trying to like strengthen all of the muscles in my foot and all of that fun stuff so the big soccer girl problem for sure no really it truly is it's honestly so annoying but here we are it's good you're taking care of it. Yeah, trying. How has um, the off season been? Um, it's been good. I've been gone. Uh, I went to Brazil twice. Um, so those are like pretty big trips. I'm honestly really happy that I'm just like home now for the rest of the off season, so I can like train and just like be in like a routine, you know? Because it's hard, like especially being in Brazil, we were like so busy, and like it's hard to like actually get a good session in and like. We're going to like random gyms and stuff, but it's like nice to be home, just like have some routine. Did you go for fun or for soccer? No, I went with Marta. We went um, to like her hometown and she had like to do some work. So we were there for like some of her work. And then we got to like, it's not, I was, I tell people though, it's not really like vacation when we're there, especially with her, because like, it's just like, go, go, go. And then like, we go see this person. Like, there's no like actual like vacation time you know I was just gonna ask have you actually rested and relaxed in this off season so far because it's traveling and doing all that I'm sure it feels good to finally just be home yeah no exactly that's exactly how I feel because like I just said like when I when we're gone like it's not like vacation it's like life times two in another country so it's cool like I get to like see a new place and that's like nice for me but for her it's like normal life um so now that I'm here I feel more like I'm on vacation to be honest with you (laughs) but how how are you resting like I'm sure there's a a balance because like you want to get back into it and get ready for the next season but you also want to rest so like how are you balancing that out right now I think it's just like my time like how I spend my time because like I train like if I'm not training in the morning like on the field I go to this place that I work out at like four times a week so I have like today Wednesday is like my day off um and I'm also doing PT like I just told you guys and that's like twice a week um so it's like okay when I'm done training which is normally depending on if I'm training twice in the morning or once I'll get done around like this time Um, and then, so how do I spend like the second half of my day? That's like my time to rest and just like relax. And I have a friend, um, she played with me in college. She's from France. So she's like in town for two weeks. So it's also now like, I get to actually like kind of focus on what I'm doing after. Cause I have to like, I don't know, like, we're going to go do like fun stuff, like go to a basketball game tonight and stuff. So it's like, I'm, I am in off season, but I'm, it feels like I'm still kind of like in season, if it makes sense. So we always joke that there is no off season. Did you just say that, Shannon? (laughs) No off season. There's always. Yeah, there is. And I, and I, I'm like, oh, I tell everybody like, yeah, in the off season, like I'll come see you guys. But it's like, this is like almost the same exact thing as being in season. Exactly. Like we train in the mornings and then I get done at like two or three. And like, after that, I'm like toast. I don't want to even get off the couch. Like some girls are like tanning and I'm like, I don't want to step foot outside. Like I don't even want to be in the sun. <laughs> like couldn't be me, but yeah, it's how I feel right now to be honest with you. So yeah. Well, you get to the game after this at least, right? So I know. Who, who do you think is going to win? Who do you want to win? I'm so torn because I, it would be so sick if Morocco won, you know, like that'd be so sick, but then are they going to win the final? Like, are they going to win the whole thing? I want them to win the whole whole thing if they're going to win, you know, but I'm, my friend is here from France. So I'm like, shit, you know, like (laughs) (laughs) go France. And also I'm living with a Brazilian. She hates Argentina. So it's like, 
she's like, well, I don't want Morocco to win. And then them get to the final and Argentina just like blow them out, you know? So there's so many scenarios. I don't know. This World Cup has been wild. This is like, you have to be like that person who just cheers for all the teams. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, woohoo. I'm USA didn't make it. Like, but whatever makes everybody happy, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. It should be good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. We'd love to like just dive in and like find out. So you started on Pride a few years ago now, right? And mm-hmm. you started as a practice player and then you worked your way up and now you're just crushing it. You just signed a new contract for two years, which is amazing. Um, so we just love to know, like, how has this journey been? How did you, did you always know you wanted to play pro? Did you always know you wanted to play where you were from and and how that kind of, uh, went about? Yeah, it's actually kind of wild. I, okay. I'll I'll just like start from, I didn't even enter my name in the draft because I was like, I didn't know how any of it worked. Um, and so I was going over to play in Dubai, like in this tournament for a little bit when I graduated. So I was just like, I'm going to go do that. And then I'm going to go and like from Dubai, just go to Europe. And I was like, going to go to France and stuff and just like live my life, you know, for just a little bit. Didn't enter my name in the draft. I think like a week or two before I left, I got a call from the pride coach at the time. And he was like, Hey Carrie, like we're interested. We want you to come out and like train and um like possibly just like see how things go, whatever. And I'm like, uh yeah, I'm actually leaving. I'm going to buy. Like, not sure when I'm gonna come back. I don't even have like a flight booked. Um, I was like, but when I come back, like, can I let you know? And then like we'll figure it out. He's like, for sure. He's like, Did you enter your name in the drafts? And I was like, No. And he's like, Well, that might be a problem, but like we'll address it when it comes. I was like, okay whatever. So fast forward, I come back in like July um, and I go out and I train and the GM at the time was like, Hey, like we want to sign you, but you didn't enter your name in the draft. So you're not considered a free agent. And like, we can't like, there's like no way about it. And I was just like, what? Like I had no idea. So yeah, practice that whole year and then signed the next year. And then that was COVID. And there was an incident that happened and I ended up getting kicked off the team. And I was like, you know what? I wasn't even sure if I wanted to play in the first place. Maybe this is just like a sign that I need to get a real job. So I get, (laughs) I apply for a job as a financial advisor has nothing to do with like what I did in college, by the way. Um, And I got the job and I was like, okay, this is it. And the next day the coach called me back and was like, Hey, we want to talk. I was like, about what? Like, I just got kicked off the team. Like, what? So he's like, we want to bring you back on for, like, the fall series. And I was like, oh, my God, I haven't worked out. I haven't even, like, looked at a gym in, like, four weeks. Like, I don't know. And basically, he was like, don't get too out of shape because we want you to come back. And I was like, oh, my God. Didn't tell him that I had just accepted a job. Like, there was no talk of that. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to do it. So go back, play the fall series, and then signed for another year, which was last year. And I basically like didn't play like at all last year. I was like hurt off and on the whole year. And I just like never really got the chance to play. Um, And I questioned again, like whether I wanted to do this again, like should I do it again? And then um, I did and I played this year finally. And it was like, I just like kind of got the taste. I got, I played like one full game and I got like the taste of it. And I was like, this is sick. Like this feels so good. I can play in the league. Like I can compete, you know? And I I just like think from then my confidence was just like, it was high. Like I had never felt that. And um, it kind of like carried me through the season. I just like was able to show what I can do. And I feel like really excited about this year. And then I, yeah, I signed for two years, which is awesome. So yeah, I'm really excited. And obviously being from Orlando, I can play in front of my family and my friends, like they can all come watch. And yeah, it's been a wild ride, but I'm like so happy. And I would, I honestly wouldn't take like any of it back, even though it sucked, but it was I mean, it led me here. So how did you stay like mentally tough through those times? Like when you did get kicked off the team, like, I feel like that would be really hard to then be like, all right, I'm going to go back and do this again. Like, how did you stay positive during that? Yeah, it was awful. Like, I'm going to be so honest with you. It it sucked. Like I've never felt, I've, I've never been so low. I like, to be honest, like I've never been so low mentally. 
and like the thought of going back and like facing the team and I had to like apologize again to the team just like by myself this time like and I like got through it and I think after that I was like if I can get through that like I can get through like hard things like I I don't know it just like kind of just I I have no idea how I did it I like I also actually see I have like a sports psychologist now that's helped me like so much um and I never thought I would like do that because there's like you know that stigma around like mental health and all that um and I she's like been the best ever also so yeah I think it's just like once I got through like the hardest part I was like well if I can do that like I can definitely play soccer you know (laughs) <laughs> a lot of courage and it's not you took the hard like it wasn't the easy way out you took the hard way so kudos to you yeah. a lot of players in that situation are just like they can't just swallow their pride and do it and just like yeah gone and instead like it, it ends up being more difficult for you so I think that's a great lesson that you did that you you did the hard thing and it all worked out and like you said you wouldn't change anything because it's, now it's where you are today and it's made yeah. so yeah well, and it's so nice that you're seeing a sports psychologist because like you said, there's such, there was such a stigma. It's getting better and better, but the more people here, like players like you who see it and are open about it, it's so helpful to, for others to then feel comfortable doing it. So, yeah. Great. And so you did mention like your family and friends come to the games. Do you think that puts more pressure on you or do you like having that? Um, I put it. I think it was like me putting pressure on myself, obviously. Um, And it put, I put more pressure on myself sometimes when like, I don't play and I'm like, Oh my God, this is so embarrassing, you know, but I've got, I think I've gotten past that too. I'm just like, like even like some of my friends are, yo, you playing tonight. And I'll be like, Nope, I'm not. And they're like, why? I'm like, well, I just like train like shit, you know, honest. I'll just like be honest with them at this point. I really like have gotten past that. Whereas before, like in the beginning, I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Like I was more worried about that than like anything else. And I'm just like, why? Like, those are my friends. Like they all, you know? So yeah, that added pressure in that sense. But like playing wise, I think it has helped just like, I'm like, that's so cool. Like they're in the stands and I get to see them after the games and it's like super rewarding at the end of it. But yeah. I love that. And I, we have to go back to that because I think that you just like brought a totally different perspective to, you know, like starting and playing time and not playing time. And if you like reach a point where you're like, it's not the end of the world and you don't treat it like it's the end of the world, it allows you to get back in your next training session and have a better training session and work your way back up to having playing time again. And I, it's funny. I don't know why we like attach this like embarrassment to it. Like, hundred percent is ending if we're yeah. not the starting lineup or maybe we don't play this week because it could be for a reason entirely separate of you. Someone else's, you know, abilities on the field versus a specific team might be better suited for that game. And yet we still like attach this big embarrassment to it. How did you like, when did you realize, or like, how did you just like almost remove your ego from the whole playing time aspect? Because that's what it really is at the end of the day is, our ego and how we feel about ourselves. I think honestly, it's like, I don't know if there was like a specific time where I was like, who cares? I think there's definitely like multiple times where I was just like, I kept telling myself like, who cares? Like, it's just like you that cares. It's, and my best friend, she, like we played together in college and like, then we played together on pride. And I talked to her a lot about it because she felt the same way. She's like, when she because she's a year older than me and she was on pride before me and she was like I'm just like embarrassed and then I felt that and I was just like oh my god but I think it's like putting the team before yourself like for me I reached a point where I was like okay like winning is more important to me and like my team than it is like my personal pride um and I also I think I kind of gain that confidence where I was like, well, I know I'm good enough and I know I can play. And I know I like, should I be on the field right now? Yes. No. But like, at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to let this like carry over and ruin me for like the rest of the season, because that was what was happening to me. Like I let that embarrassment and then I would get like mad and pissed. And then I go into the next day and I train again, like shit. I'm like, well, I'm not going to like play for sure. If this is like, (laughs) 
what I keep doing. And it was like a spiral effect for me, like personally. And that's something that we talked about with my sports psychologist. She's like, well, it's just like a downward spiral. Like, and, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, I was just like, so aware that it was happening, but I like, wasn't doing anything about it. So yeah, it, it's just like, I think it's just like a constant journey of like learning and then like doing something about it. And then if it happens again, it happens again, you know, but I don't know. It's, it's a constant struggle, but I think I, I've like kind of, it's like mind over matter and I've kind of like gotten past it. I'm hearing so much about self-awareness and then also about how you are so accountable, like even apologizing to your team, like you're, you're admitting that you didn't play well. And that's probably why you didn't, you know, play in a game. It's just so refreshing because I just feel like a lot of players forget, like being accountable is so important and under like, like reflecting on how you're doing it, being like, okay, this, I'm not a victim of this situation. I, there's, right. you know, a, there's a rhyme and reason. So it's just really nice reminder to the players listening, like hold yourself accountable and really like be realistic and honest with yourself. And it, you're going to have so much more fun in soccer if you're doing that. So that's such a good takeaway yeah. from your entire experience there. Um, so we would love to know, what do you think sets you apart as a defender right now in the league? Uh, I'm like, I don't know. I wanted to say like the first word that came to my mind was like ruthless. Like I just like, I don't know, like I'll make like the last tackle. I'll do like the dirty work. And I think that's like kind of what sets me apart. I think like if you ask one of the girls on my team, Erica, I'm like, she's like, you're the least like the defender that I want to go against the least. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? She's like, I don't know. I just like hate going against you. And I'm like, well, I guess that's a good thing. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I always just bring like another, like, I'm kind of just like gritty and like nasty sometimes on the field. But watching your slide tackles. I find that impressive. Have you always been good at that? Yeah, I love slide tackling. I like love it. And I actually learned like one of my coaches was like, Carrie, you don't need to slide like all the time. And I'm like, but I like doing it. He's like, yeah, but because sometimes I'll like miss. I'm like, I slide. I don't need to. And then like someone gets past me. He's like, you didn't need to do that. And I'm like, oh, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love slide tackling. It's my favorite. What, um, what, like, how have you grown as a player on the field since you joined the pride? Like, what have you been working on yourself? Um, I just like learned a lot tactically. And this was like my first year playing center back. And I ended up like really liking it Um, because I grew up as a midfielder. So I could like see the whole field, you know, and I think then coming as center back, you can really see everything's in front of you. Um, And I like communicate a lot when I'm on the field also, which helps. I need to like kind of learn my tone a a little bit better working on that too. But um, I, I don't know. I think like tactically, I still have a lot to learn, but when I like knowing the game better tactically has helped me in like every aspect. I don't have to run as much. I don't have to like, I don't have to slide. I can just stay on my feet, like things like that. Um, so yeah, but I still have a lot to learn. They told me like off season, I need to learn more, but I'm like, okay, well then help me. I need help. I can't do it by myself, you know, (laughs) but yeah. But it sounds like, I mean, I agree. Like if you do know the tactics, it's an easier way to play like smarter, not harder, kind of like to do doing more up here means you do less on the field then. So that's awesome that you, that you recognize that and that you're doing that. Yeah. Um, last question. Cause we know you want to get to the game. Um, what is the legacy you want to leave on the field? What do you want to be remembered for? Uh, I would say kind of like going back to like me being like a ruthless defender, like it doesn't always have to be pretty, you know, like it can be like, I want to be known for like, I, I can play, like she can definitely play, but like, she'll never give up. And like, she'll, she will lay the last tackle or she will like go the extra five yards. Um, so I don't know how you put that in like a sentence, but hopefully you can, I don't know. If I think of like a lasting impression, I don't know. I just think like a hard worker and uh, like gritty. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like we have a really good understanding of your personality now. Like you? I, I feel like that <laughs> you're a really hard worker. You're like, like you're honest with yourself. Like you're gritty. I'm too honest. That's the downfall. 
<laughs> that goes back to like the you know the whole like psychology I'm like well I played like shit and they're like here you don't have to say that I'm like well it's true a lot of listeners can relate to a lot of things that you said today like it's 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 really cool so thank you um yeah. can you just do a quick rapid fire for sure let's do it cool. teammate you want to be stuck on a deserted island with and why Oh God. Um, I'd probably say Gunny because she's like, or maybe not Gunny. Okay. Marta, because she can definitely last in the wild with like a stick and a knife. (laughs) Solid reason. Uh, What teammate would you call to bail you out of jail? Um, I'm not so good at this. Maybe. Mm, Caitlin. Why? What she just she keep, she keep a secret for me. <laughs> I'm I'm sure she'd be. I love that fun. response. Usually people are like, she won't judge me, but you're like, she'll keep the secret that I was yeah. wrong. <laughs> like now everybody just needs to know that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the teammate you would text the most random things to. Erica. Teammate, you want to borrow something from their closet. Uh, Darian. What's her style like? Darian style? It's always changing. It's so sick. Like, she'll come to a game. I'm like, damn, well, dude, you just wore a completely different outfit last week, but you rock. Like, she rocks it all. Oh, that so, is cool. some people that can do that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of annoying. Um, the, teammate, the teammate that you would watch a reality show about? Uh... I would say Sid, but she's not on our team anymore. Um, we maybe just we that. were just <laughs> saying that. That's so hilarious. Could, if I'm we like, could, could fund watch, the show. <laughs> I would watch your Instagram stories like literally all day. It's hilarious. Yeah, I just said I watched her videos of her and her kids making lasagna for like 20 minutes. <laughs> like, like, watch <laughs> How is this lasagna going to come out? <laughs> <laughs> um, but maybe, uh, maybe like Gunny. She's she's a character yeah nice what teammate. what about oh sorry i was gonna say teammate you would want to binge a series with um uh, i'll say megan nice we can hang okay teammate you would want to go out to eat with uh marta entertainment is there any specific food that you guys love eating yeah actually she's making rice beans and like Tarasco steak. She that like loves so good. Yeah. It's like right up my alley. <laughs> like simple, but so good. Mm-hmm. All right. And our last question What is your biggest soccer girl problem? Oh, God. I'm always injured. That's like such a problem for me. Yeah. Being in that training room in general is. I'm like, get me out of here. When, and when I don't That's need it. to be there, I'm like, you're like, Carrie, come in here. I'm like, nope, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Prison. <laughs> Can't that flow. It's bad juju for me. That was a good soccer problem. Well, Carrie, thank you so much for coming on. This was awesome. And we are so excited to continue to watch you crush it. And hopefully we get to come to a game soon. Yeah. Let me where are you guys at? I'm actually I live in Jupiter, so I'm not that far. So I really have to come. Oh my god, no excuses. Sorry, but <laughs> now that I know. <laughs> I drive. I'm being silly, so I'll come for sure. Cool. I'll, He'll fly down. We'll all come. Um, cool. Well, it was nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming on. Great to meet you. Hey, go France. Go Morocco. Yeah, it's 31 <laughs> nothing. It's 31 oh, nothing. Oh, 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 I gotta go off. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. We may laugh, we may learn, we might be your king.